All right. It's time we had a talk. Well, more of a rant, really, but you get the idea. Those of you who keep up with Bravely News are already aware, but for those who aren't in the loop, allow me to let you in on what's up. Brilliant Lights just got cancelled. Yep, the 10th anniversary Superstar game that came out in January of last year is going to be shutting down in February of 2023. At the time it ends, it will have been out for 13 months. Literally just over one year. Now, they're still going to be releasing the rest of the game's content. They said they're going to be able to wrap up the story, thank God. And we're even going to get another archive after the service ends, like with Praying Braj, which means I or anyone else will be able to translate and relate Brilliant Light's plot to the Western audience. But here's the thing. Why am I the one doing this? I'm not saying I don't like making those videos. In fact, they're some of the more fun kinds of Bravely content I get to make. But you know what would be a lot better? If they released the friggin' thing here in the West, where we are endlessly crying out for more Bravely Default games. I really don't understand it. With Bravely Archive and Praying Braj, I can get why they weren't really translated over, because we were still sorta in the days of Bravely growing in the West. Fairy's Effect, even that I'm a bit iffy on, but the team was also stepping away from the series after the whole situation with Second, so I can sympathize with why that one might not have made it over. If you want to know more about the Bravely Second situation, I did a video very recently on it. You can go check it out after this. I'll even link it for you in the description and everything. But Brilliant Lights? This was the decade anniversary game, the celebration for the series. They had the desire to get Revo and Rio to make new original music for major moments in the game. They wanted to keep adding new characters to the game as the series progressed. And by now, they must know for certain that there's a Western audience because they released BD2 at the same time in Japan and internationally. It had 4 million users in its first two weeks. And again, that's Japan only. Granted, some of those could be proxy accounts from people NordVPNing and whatnot, but if anything, that proves my point more, that people are willing to go through all that effort just to play the game. Plus, there's the mobile Octopath prequel that came out this summer, and that one's still going, so what's going on? This is now the fourth time a spin-off game has been released and closed down for the Bravely series without even getting a chance to leave the country. Maybe it's too much money for how the game's already doing. I mean, it definitely didn't keep all 4 million of those users because clearly it's fucking cancelled. But I'm not asking for much. I wouldn't even care if it was just text translations. Forget about voiceovers. That's expensive, I know. But going back to Octopath COTC, they just have English text and Japanese voice only. Why can't we get that? The cynic in me wants to say that the mobile games have just been a fundraising scheme every time, so they make enough money to fund the next mainline entry and then shut everything down. Hence why this keeps happening. And I can't help thinking that this is true. Like, I know there's definitely some elements of truth to it. Fairy's Effect was a test to see if people wanted more Bravely, and the money in response to it showed them that, yes, people want Bravely. But it gets worse when Brilliant Lights barely lasted a year, and they were selling a bunch of merch for both the 10th anniversary, as well as tons of event exclusive stuff at the art exhibitions in Japan. So it just feels like they hit their threshold early, and now the team is moving straight along to the next project. It's just frustrating that this keeps happening, that we keep getting to miss out on these new additions to the Bravely universe, especially for a game that was meant to celebrate the series, that shows off more background lore and tells interesting stories, like going into more stuff about Mona, Roddy and Lily's daughter from BD2, or actually showing the Fire Vestal from Lux and Dark before she was offed. I even had a video planned a while ago to talk about why I thought a true Bravely mobile game wouldn't be as bad as a lot of the Western audience makes the idea out to be. And since we're on the topic, I'll just sum up the ideas I was going to present. My argument was going to be that releasing the next Luxendark game on a phone would be substantially better, so long as they make it an actual honest-to-god Bravely game, 
because mobile devices would have access to all the features of the 3DS that the Switch can't even provide. Touchscreen, cameras, gyroscope, microphone, easy internet access, maybe even Bluetooth to release a companion toy with, like the Pokewalker or something. But now seeing brilliant lights going under, I cannot in good faith try to make that argument. Because every single time, these Bravely Mobile games just keep getting cancelled and shut down before there's even a chance of them coming to our part of the world. <sighs> Alright, I think that probably covers everything I had to say. Got that out of my system. Sorry that the first video of 2023 is so negative. It's not how I would have liked it to be, but I felt like this needed to be addressed. Uh, I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk about the channel going forward. I haven't really been doing it since I expressed an interest months ago in expanding, but I'm going to try and spread out into more games and series and video types as this year goes on. For real this time. <laughs> uh, I'm still going to cover Bravely, of course, but only doing one niche JRPG series is not enough. I want to do more stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I also have a handful of video ideas for the near future and some others that I'm already working on as well. Thank you for watching. Here's to a good 2023 and I'll see you soon.